Hey everybody, it's Daniel here for Mobile Syrup, and we are looking at the brand new Sony Xperia S. This is a beautiful uh, monolithic device. It's uh, made of premium polycarbonate, and uh, it just looks great. Uh, there's a lot of interesting features here. Uh, it's got a HDMI port, it's got a dedicated shutter button, it's got a lot of really nice design choices. There's a bit of a curve to the screen. It's got this uh, light bar here that Sony's been touting on all of their devices. It really is just a much more simple, much more well-made, uh, well-constructed device. It's got three capacitive touch buttons on the bottom. Uh, it's got a dedicated shutter button for um, taking photos. Uh, there's a little clip that comes off for the micro USB port. Uh, the, the power button's on the bottom, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with that curved design really really nice. Uh, one of the star features of the device is a 12 megapixel camera uh, with a flashlight uh, not a, and an LED flash. It's got that um, beautiful light bar all the way around. Uh, really interesting. And another star feature is that 720p display. Just absolutely stunning. 1280 by 720 LCD display. This is definitely one of the highlights of uh, the market and uh, that's exactly what Sony's going to be marketing here. It's got the mobile Bravia engine, beautiful, beautiful uh, color reproduction, excellent contrast and just overall a stunning, stunning piece of hardware. First off you can see that the Xperia S is running Sony's new uh, UXP NXT um, operating system. This is actually running Android 2.3.7 Gingerbread. So Definitely a disappointing feature here. Uh, one of the more disappointing uh, aspects of this device is that it's shipping with gingerbread, but uh, this is the latest build and it's the latest version of gingerbread and Sony provinces an update very shortly. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, interesting features with gingerbread, however, so we can't discount it overall. It's got an excellent and updated version of Soundscape, or sorry, Timescape. Uh, you can consolidate your feeds and your friends' feeds into these widgets. It's got this beautiful updated weather widget here and uh, it's actually incorporated folders right into the uh, right into the OS uh, within Gingerbread so you can create a new folder just by drag dragging one icon on top of the other. There is a changeable four button uh, bar at the at the bottom here and it's got a horizontal uh, launcher so if you're worried about you know not really getting used to this device coming from uh, an ice cream sandwich device, don't worry about that at all. Uh, this is preloaded with a quite a bit of Rogers bloatware here. We got, um, I count, eight dedicated Rogers icons, my account, one context. A lot of these are portals to the web page, but nevertheless, um, there is some, you, there's some valuable stuff here like Rogers Live, one number I use all the time, and it's a great app. Uh, my account, as always, uh, the other things are a little bit superfluous and you can't delete them unfortunately so shop, ringbacks, ringtones uh, there's also your music installed here so that's a ninth and that's uh, got access to Roger's music service uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that Sony's incorporated here so we have Timescape as I said uh, we have um, we have Timescape, we have Track ID and Video Unlimited, Music Unlimited and we have access to the PlayStation Store so you can download PS1 games once you've registered. A couple of other things that are preloaded here. We have a barcode reader, Neo Reader, an office suite which you actually have to register to use which I think is a little bit crazy um, but it does not come with the updated Office Suite Professional 6 but you can uh, edit and update all your Word documents here which is really nice. Another thing that I find a little bit uh, alarming is a pre-installed version of McAfee Security. Now this was pre-installed on another Rogers phone, the Xperia Pro, and that was actually running when the phone started up. So you, you would have to actually register for it in order for it to stop bugging you. This is a little bit better in the sense that it doesn't bug you and you can delete it. Now we'll go, in, we'll go into that in just a second, but there's a lot of stuff that you know you may not want here that you can't get rid of. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Fortunately, however, this has the chops to actually um, incorporate a bunch of different apps that the 
previous version, the Xperia Arc and the Xperia Play did not have. This has 32 gigabytes of internal storage and about two gigabytes of phone memory as opposed to about 450 megs of phone memory in the previous uh, versions of the Arc and the Play. So this is a great improvement. There is no 16 gigabyte version, so there is no expandable storage either, but you are getting plenty of internal storage for your movies, your music, and whatever you like. Uh, when I say that some of these apps are not deletable, if you go into um, one of the apps and you look up, say, One Contacts, it actually does not allow you to uninstall it. Now that is in contrast to, say, McAfee Security, which you can go and you can uninstall. So you can also re-download re it from the market if you ever lose it. But that's something to keep in mind if you uh, are you know, very wary of bloatware like I am. The um, Xperia S comes with a bunch of different themes. You can edit, uh, they're, they're all the same except for the color, so they don't really alter anything except the color scheme overall. There's kind of a skeuomorphic look to all of the native apps too, which I'm not um, I, I'm not a, a huge fan of. So for example, when you are in the uh, messaging application, you see this kind of a textured background here and that, fault, that, that carries over to the calendar as well and the contacts. So if you go to phone, you'll see that it's got the same textured background that um, updates depending on the theme. Uh, you also have, uh, if we go into calendar, you have the same thing here. So. It's a nice looking calendar, it's very versatile. Uh, Gmail, the gallery, these are all gingerbread applications. So you're gonna have to keep in mind, this is, I hate this gingerbread app, I think it's worthless. And I really like the one that's in Ice Cream Sandwich. So keep in mind that, you know, this Ice Cream Sandwich update is coming. It can't, won't be longer than a few months. There's already betas out for the Arc and the Ray and the Play and uh, there must be internal betas for the Xperia S as well. I have loaded the, the um, beta ROM for the ice cream sandwich on the Xperia Arc S and I'll show that in a future video. But this is just something to keep in mind. This is only temporary and performance is really good. Uh, also, I wanna show you the photos. This is a 12 megapixel camera. The photos are absolutely astounding. Really, really good. Just uh, great color reproduction. Autofocus is almost instantaneous. If I you know, show you here, It's really good. It just emulates a, a camera, a point and shoot camera really well. You can shoot 1080p video on this as well. The internal processor, it's a MSM8260 1.5 gigahertz processor from Qualcomm. This is a last generation device. Uh, this is the same, uh, sorry, this is the last generation processor. This is the same processor that's in the HTC Amaze and HTC Raider and the uh, Galaxy Note and a bunch of others that are um, th that kind of have moved on since then. So I would have loved to see the Snapdragon S4 in here, but this is a Snapdragon S3. Nevertheless, Sony got by with a single core processor on the Xperia Arc and the Play when everybody else had a dual core. They didn't really suffer for it. I counted a 2,500 millisecond SunSpider test on here, so nobody's really going to notice the difference. You know, you you don't you haven't reached the um, the limits of what these uh, systems on, on a chip can do and uh, the Xperia S is not wanting for any processing power. Uh, you can see that there's a tiny bit of lag when you're changing home screens but uh, this will likely be worked out in a future update. The other thing to keep in mind here is that there is a gig of RAM in here and that is uh, that goes a long way to making sure that all your multitasking is uh, very smooth. So moving along, uh, there's an update to the keyboard that's actually really nice. I didn't like the Xperia Arc keyboard. I found it to not be able to keep up with me. I, I found the Xperia Arc in general not be able to keep up with my fingers on the keyboard. I never liked the Sony keyboards until now. So this, you can type normally and the autocorrect is uh, much better than it used to be. Hey, how are you? The other thing that they've added is uh, kind of a swipe-like feature. So you can actually swipe now from one to the other. Hey, how are you? The only difference is that you can't swipe the punctuation like you can in swipe. So you actually have to stop what you're doing, press the one, two, three button, and the period or the comma or whatever you want when you want punctuation. But it's much faster than typing in a regular, in a regular way, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, the other, other changes, um, there's just a few kind of aesthetic differences here between the gingerbread version on the Arc and uh, this one. 
you know, for example, the music player has been given an overhaul. It looks a lot better. You can swipe it between songs and albums. You can connect your albums to Music Unlimited and uh, you can cache them. So if you have subscribed to Music Unlimited, which just launched in Canada, you have a much better portal for that. Uh, you can also um, move this, you know, move any music you want. So if I play, you know, this song, for example, and I and you can see just how loud and clear the music is. So I'm going to turn that off and you can see that uh, there's an equalizer built in here and uh, you can also change headphone surround. So there's a feature called XLoud that Sony has incorporated that emulates a surround sound system on, uh, on your headphones. Uh, and there's a very, very good equalizer which I'm really happy about because usually the stock and Android music players don't incorporate an equalizer. You have to pay for something like um, power or um, power amp or something. So this also allows you to uh, look up the artist on YouTube, look up Google search for example. You can search for karaoke videos. You can look up things on Wikipedia. Excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, you can also um, edit the songs, edit the, uh, sorry, edit the metadata, edit the album art and uh, things like that. So lots of stuff that Sony's done to make this a more um, overall very powerful experience. If we go up to the Xperia settings here we can see that you can set it to uh, install PC Companion so you can sync your music, your movies, things like that. You will also have to do your updates. When I first got this device you'll, I, it prompted me to do an update. You won't be able to do it over the air. You will have to have to actually log in to um, the PC Companion app on your Windows PC a little bit unfortunate, but uh, that's that's how she goes. So there's also portable Wi-Fi hotspot and USB tethering incorporated in here, of course. And the media transfer is actually using MTP, so that's better because it it uh, is is no no issues. It'll just detect your Windows PC. It's a little bit trickier on the Mac, but most people have gotten used to it. There's also this Facebook Inside Xperia that's been incorporated since the last few versions of Gingerbread for the Arc and the Play and it just allows you to more uh, tightly integrate Facebook into your contacts, things like that. You can post on people's walls, for example, directly from the contacts menu. Uh, lots of good stuff there. If we move along, uh, you'll see that they've actually brought back a lot of the old standby apps. There's Track ID, which is kind of like a Shazam. It'll allow you to listen to songs and um, and identify them. It's really good, actually. It works quite well. The other stuff that I really like about uh, about Sony is that they they allow you to use DLNA very easily so you can set the phone as a media server have other devices detect it you can also play other devices media on the on the device so there's lots of good stuff that you can do as long as you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network and uh, this you know unfortunately it doesn't support all of the ice cream sandwich only apps but things like Plex and and other media server apps all work on this Video Unlimited has actually increased its um, its selection quite a bit so you'll be able to rent and purchase movies and uh, it's not not a bad service you know it's it's got a, a bunch of selection that things like the HTC watch doesn't have it's got TV shows uh, we can you know take a look at the new arrivals for example and get a good idea there's contraband the Iron Lady War Horse and you can purchase those as well as rent them so purchasing you can download for twenty dollars renting for four ninety nine not a bad deal especially since all of, a lot of these movies are quite new uh... let's move on and we see that um, we're looking at you know a lot of these kind of bloatware type apps you have the neo reader here which as i said was a barcode scanner there is nfc support for this which is quite cool so one of the nice additions to this is that uh... NFC is built right in here. You just go into the settings and turn it on and there you go. It works. Uh, with Android 4.0, when it updates, you'll be able to use Android Beam, which is a really nice feature. And a lot of other things incorporated into Ice Cream Sandwich are coming soon. That's the one thing I really miss about using this device is that the Gmail app calendar, um, I can't use Chrome Beta on here. So the things that I get really used to on my Galaxy Nexus, I'm kind of going backwards here. I haven't really had a chance to use the phone too much to determine whether battery is good, but there's a big battery in here, it's about 1800 milliamps, 
and uh, there's you know it, it, gingerbread is pretty good on batteries so and Sony in general has been pretty good on batteries so there's not too much worry there um, a lot of apps are incorporated in here with the batteries turning off but there's a lot of apps in here that I really uh, would like to see you know removable if I could um, but mo more importantly I just think that this is a beautiful device it's going to be upgraded to ice cream sandwich quite shortly and we'll be able to give you a more thorough walkthrough as uh, as time goes on but this looks like uh, one of the devices to get it's $99.99 exclusively at the Sony store and uh, it's really just one of those devices that Sony should have released a while back. This, uh, this would have been a great 2011 device. As it stands, it's a really good 2012 device, but there are some shortcomings that I would love to see rectified in future software versions. And overall, I think the, so the 720p screen, the 12 megapixel camera, and overall the design are the three main features that people will, will use to, uh, to purchase this device. And it also comes with an HDMI out if you want to connect it to your television or uh, media center. So this is a quick look at the Sony Xperia S coming soon exclusively to Sony stores in Canada for $99.99. Thanks for watching.